So the game I'm playing today is called Samorost. This is a classic Flash game created by Amanita Design that was originally released all the way back in 2003. If I'm not mistaken, I think this is Amanita Design's first game? Or at least the first game they ever released publicly, and it was initially released for free because it was a Flash game after all. So I don't really know too much about this Flash game series in particular, because Samorost is part of a series of Flash games. There was also a sequel that came out a couple years later, and there was also a third game that came out just a few years ago. But based on my very minimal knowledge of this game's plot, you are playing as a space gnome, and you have to guide this little space gnome across a variety of incredibly surreal landscapes, and I don't really know what else you're doing other than that. I know that this is a point-and-click game, and you can, well, click on a whole variety of things in order to make other things happen. Yeah, that's a perfect way to describe it, isn't it? Click on things to make other things happen. I mean, that's the entire point of point-and-click games, right? It's called point-and-click for a reason. But in all seriousness, though, I have wanted to play this game for a pretty long time. I have covered a bunch of Amanita Design's other games in the past, like Botanicula, Machinarium, and Pilgrims, and uh, I also played Chuchel as well. And I think in those videos, or at least a couple of those videos, I had alluded to the fact that I wanted to try and play the Samoros games at some point in the future. I wasn't sure if I was going to start with Samoros 2 or 3, because preferably I wanted to start with the original. But the only problem is that the original Samoros was only ever released as a Flash game, and it didn't initially make its way over to Steam, and because of the fact that Flash is basically dead now, it's no longer possible to play the original version of Samoros. Not through legitimate means, anyway. However, Amanita Design did something very recently that I probably shouldn't have been surprised by, but still kind of caught me off guard, and that is, they released a remastered edition of the original Samoros. How long ago did this remaster come out? Well, at the time that I'm recording this video, just a few days ago. Yeah, so it turns out that Amanita had been working on a remastered edition of the original Samoros for a while now, and this remastered edition is supposed to contain brand new graphics, or at least the graphics have been updated, I don't think they're brand new necessarily, but they have been updated, they are much higher quality now, there's also some brand new sound effects, and also brand new music. The music in this game is being composed by the incredibly talented Floex, who also made the music music for Machinarium and some of the later Samoros games, and this remastered version is being released absolutely free of charge, just like the original game, which means you can go to Steam right now and download this game for free. And the game is also available on itch.io now, in addition to iOS and Android. Again, links will be in the description as always. So, I am going to start this here, I am going into this game completely blind pretty much. I want to try and experience the game blind here, which I think I did with all of Amanita's other games as well. Samorost is supposedly a pretty short game, or at least the original is. I have no idea if I'm going to get through the entire game in this video, but I heard that it is very short, so I might be able to. So with that being said, we are going to get started with playing this here, so I have no idea what I should click on right now. But it looks like there are some little dots that are lighting up on this planet right here, so I, I could just try and, uh, oh wait, the icons do change. Okay, like whenever I can click on stuff? Or I guess that indicates I can click on something. Okay, that's a telescope. I presume. Okay, there's our little space gnome right here. What, what, what exactly do you see out of that telescope, bud? You saw something that seems to have surprised him. Uh, giant... Spaceship of some sort? I mean, I'm only calling it a spaceship because of its shape. Oh, it's gonna crash into this planet and we need to stop it. Okay. Yeah, some sort of, uh... Okay, uh, Polokanizer? Pol Wait. Polokanizer? I think I'm reading that correctly, or is my brain just, just, like, malfunctioning already? I have no idea. Are my synapses already, like, on fire? before we truly start the game. Okay, that's already very weird. Hello? Wait, can I click on you? 
Whose face is this exactly? Hang on. Oh, I see. What what exactly is that is that called? Is that called like a like a hookah or something? That that kind of thing where people like like I don't know, they basically it's kinda like vaping almost. Yes, inhale those 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 good vapors, those precious vapors. I don't even know what I'm talking about already. Okay, yeah, we appear to be on some sort of like spaceship that's that's harboring life on it. There's grass growing on it apparently. It's a biomechanical spaceship, I'm assuming, or maybe it's another planet. I have no idea. Already can't tell what's happening. What does this button do? It does nothing at the moment. I probably need a key to unlock that. Okay, so let's uh try spinning this around. Okay, I put something back into place. What does this sign do? Oh, I can rotate the sign. Does that do anything though? It probably does. Uh yeah, that's not gonna do anything right now. Uh rotate the sign over that way, perhaps, if that'll do anything. I don't know. I don't know if it's doing anything to the button at all. Uh, what do you have to say? Oh, you don't actually say anything. Okay, I'm not entirely sure what that means you do. Actually, wait, can I make you go in a different direction if I change the, the cyan around? No, it doesn't seem like it. Yeah, I assume these guys are probably harvesting crops or something. This guy just, like, jumps whenever I click on him. Okay. But why... why... Do you- do you walk towards him, though, whenever I click on you? That's gotta be important for something. What about this guy all the way in the back? You also just jump around, too. Actually, I can- I can click on every single one of these guys, and they all just jump. They jump for joy. Okay. Uh, I'm a little- a little confused here. Hang on a second. Maybe- maybe the guy smoking this stuff right here is probably important for something. Can I still activate this while this is on? Yeah. Actually, wait, no, that's using up all of the- what looked like charcoal of some sort. Oh, wait a second. Could I use this as the key, I wonder? Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go. 500 IQ play. That's that's outside the box thinking right there. Yeah, so this is gonna move along now. And I already restored this, actually. Oh, okay, this is like a ski lift. He's gonna go skiing on the grass, apparently. Okay, I'm assuming the sign needs to be in that direction then. Did I already set this up? Oh, wait, the, the guy's in your way? Okay, I'll move him out of the way for you. Oh, that's why, that's why I need to get him out of here. Yeah, there we go. Oh, get that nice jump, that nice air time. Okay, and then he just crashed and landed on top of a house. Okay, I'm gonna assume that was the first level. Uh, these look like... Goats, llamas... It looks like they have spikes on them. These are some weird-looking creatures right here. Um, okay, well, I can click on the Space Gnome himself. And I don't know if you actually if he actually has a name or not. Oh, okay. I accidentally pushed that guy right into the pit. I deeply apologize. I accidentally hi, I accidentally killed your friend here. Okay, wait. This may actually be important for something. Yeah, because this he, he just comes back out of this little hut right here. Okay, so did I Yeah, it seems like I can click on the hole as well. Okay, well there's a fishing rod over here, I noticed. So can I go grab the fishing rod? Okay, this guy's gonna come and grab it. What are you taking out? You're taking out a fish. Okay, you, you, you grab the fish. You're gonna take it back into your hut with you. Oh, I see. You're gonna cook it. Okay, can I can, can I come over there somehow? Getting cooked fit. What the heck is this? This chameleons? Oh, God. Nope. Get the lizards out of here. You're not gonna come up here and eat, eat my sheep today. Oh, my God. What is happening? A pterodactyl? Why is there a pterodactyl all of a sudden? Also, the guy just ate the fish on his own. I didn't even, like, get a chance to ask him. Oh, I see. The pterodactyl is coming to eat the, the skeleton of the fish now. Do you do anything? You just fly away. Why are there lizards? Go away, please. Are you, like, important for anything? Oh, we're just leaving? Okay, yeah, it's Space Gnome's riding on the, the fish skeleton now. Hi, are you just going away? I guess you are going away. Was that it? Was that all I had to do? I thought I might have had something to do with, uh... Or I might have had to do something with that, uh... That sheep that I was constantly knocking into the pit. Because it looked like I could click on the pit itself, weirdly enough, but... Okay, I guess we'll just move on. Let's, uh, rotate this, even though I have no clue what that's doing exactly. But do it anyway. It kind of looks like the guy has a nose. Um... Okay, he's just going back. Okay, hang on a second. I want you to go forward, though. Come on. There we go. Just put you back into place. 
What does this button do? It doesn't do anything right now. That is a snail. I can click on the snail and he just goes back into his shell. Okay, not useful for anything. This hole. This is just a bunch of bees that come out of the uh, that come out of the hole. Okay. Wait, what what is that? Okay, I thought that looked like a light bulb or something. Uh yeah, hi. How are you doing? I'm going to figure this out. Hang on a second. Just you wait, little bud. I'm going to try and uh okay, wait. This guy has a face on him. What do you do? You just kind of make a, a sp spooky noise at me. Okay, a spooky noise. Uh, This button doesn't seem to do anything still. Well, what is this? Oh? I'm going to assume this guy's probably drinking water because now there's flowers growing out of his head. All right, well, um... <laughs> I already feel like I'm on drugs. Uh, okay, let's see here. Does this button do anything now? It still doesn't. Okay, this snail is still over here. Um... Yeah, the face still does nothing. What about the bees? Yeah, go pollinate the flowers! Go get its nectar! Go grab its nectar. It's gotta be doing something. I'm assuming. I mean, with every game from Amanita that I play, I really have no idea what I'm doing half the time. I'm just clicking on stuff and, and hoping to God that it does, like, something right. Or I get, like, the, you know, the correct outcome. Oh, there's a ladder. Okay, that guy, that guy ha is wearing a light bulb on his head. For absolute sure he is. Oh, the light bulb is his head. Okay, that's totally not, like, creepy at all. Okay. <laughs> uh, I can click on the flowers now, but it doesn't seem like it's really doing anything. Okay. Um, this will probably enable the light bulb. Oh, that's what that switch is for. Okay. It's kind of what I was thinking. Alright, what are we bringing up here? It's someone else's house? It's just a sphere. Or is this, like, a... Like an old deep-sea diver helmet or something? I don't even know. Um, you still don't do anything? Can we open this? Get in. Yeah, he actually is getting in. Okay. Where are we gonna go? We're gonna go traveling? We're gonna go back down? I guess we are. Okay. Really do not know what's happening right now, but maybe, maybe I'm not supposed to understand anything. Okay, we got caught in the tree branch right here, it seems. Okay, but can we, can we get out? Are we able to? No, it kind of seems like we're stuck here. Okay, we're gonna have to find a way to get unstuck. This tree branch. That is a squirrel with a disturbingly human-looking face. Turn on the gramophone. No? Why Why do you have your thumbs in your ears? Excuse me, can you pull them out so I can turn on the gramophone, perhaps? No? Okay. I don't quite understand what to do here. Uh, the owl. Disturbingly human-looking eye is... What about the worm? You go... Yeah, woodpecker, go eat the worm. There you go. I helped that woodpecker kill that poor innocent worm. I was... I was... I was complicit... I, I was complicit in its murder. Okay, well, I guess I'm gonna be complicit in all the other murders of these worms, because go... Go eat them. Yeah, go eat that one. And then I think there's another one down here that was, like, poking its head out somewhere. Oh, oh god. Oh god. Okay, where's this one going? Get... Get over here. Is this something I'm gonna have to tie him? Okay, maybe not. Okay, hang on a second. Yeah, there is also this one over here. I thought that worm was, like, moving through the two different holes, but no, I think those were actually two different worms. Okay. So there's no worms now. Did you change? Okay, yeah, you just wanted the worms to go away, I see. Okay. Oh, girl. This music, though. Oh, this is so chill. I like it. Can I change it? Oh, I actually can. You change it with your tail, I see. Oh, okay, so I can just... It's almost like a sound test. Oh, damn, okay. This is a drum and bass crap right here. I don't know if this is from the original game, though, because, I mean, the entire soundtrack was redone for this remaster, so I have no idea. Ah, okay. This is not appropriate for a game of this kind, but still, I like it. Um, oh, I shut it off accidentally. There we go. That's that's a lot more soothing on my ears. There we go. Nice, like, s smooth... I don't think it's jazz necessarily, but... It's smooth AF. I'll at least say that. Can we get out now? 
No, we still can't? Okay. So what exactly... What do we do here now? I have no idea. Yeah, there's there's the woodpecker. What does the owl do now? Nothing. Uh, okay, I need to figure out... I gotta figure out what exactly I'm supposed to do now. Okay, so... Oh, what about this? Okay, no, so I can't actually do anything with this. There was like this little thing right here that kind of looked like some sort of switch that maybe I could use to open the door, but that's not doing anything. Uh, I don't know how to get you unstuck. Does it have something to do with the, the music I'm playing? Hang on a sec. Because I can still move you around. Wait, do I have to actually hear the, the drum and bass? To get him unstuck? Well, I don't know. It's actually causing the owl to, to, to awaken. So wait. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, I do actually need to have this playing. That's how I get him unstuck. Because the owl gets, like, way too excited. Okay. Well, now we're swinging around. Uh... Don't know what that does. That's probably important for something, so maybe I have to keep it that way. Wait. Okay, I don't know if that was doing something to the string. Okay, whatever. Can I get out now? It looks like I can. Yeah, get out. Land on the mushroom. There you go. You're out. You're out and about. You're safe for now, at least. There's an anteater right here, though. Don't know how I feel about him just yet. This door I can't open. It seems to have some dots on it, though. I'm gonna assume that's probably an important thing. Probably important for something. Oh, wait, no, I can actually go up here. Okay, I guess we're just ignoring the anteater, then. Okay, then. Still can't open the door, though. Can I somehow get to the anteater? I have no idea. Well, I mean, I probably can get to him, I just don't know how. What does this do? Oh, okay, that's gonna make- that actually makes the ant go somewhere else. Oh, okay, so I probably should have had that in place to begin with, then. Because that's actually gonna let the anteater eat the ants, which I'm gonna assume is important for something. I just don't know what yet. Oh, wait, I can actually click on this box now. Uh, oh, I, I, okay, hang on, I see. Oh, yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah, that was a- that was a- a clue. The dots were a clue, I was right. Oh god, it's dark in here, though. Oh, this is some sort of machine. What in the world is this? Okay, wait. Raise the ladder? 60... wait, 10 degrees, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60... Direction? Which I can- I guess I can change with this? No, that's causing steam to... To come out of these little, like, uh, these little pipes here. Yeah, it's just letting out steam. Okay. So I can turn this. I can't turn it, actually. It's not letting. Not letting me. Okay, this is rather odd. I can turn the lights back off. But it doesn't seem like I can click on anything, though, when the lights are off, so... Is this actually changing something on the outside, I wonder? Because this is clearly a ladder, right? Or can I not go back out? Can I not, like, leave this area and go back to the outside? No? Probably not? Hang on a second, there's a light bulb here that I didn't notice before, but it doesn't seem like I can click on it. Okay, well then how do I change the direction of whatever this might be? Because I don't know what I'm changing the direction of exactly. Like, what else can I click on here? This doesn't bulge at all. Or this doesn't budge, I mean. Not bulge. Actually, wait a second. Oh! Oh, because the the machine had Q equals 50 on it. Q equals 50 inches. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the middle button right here is to actually enable the ladder. Oh, okay, okay. But what about the direction, though? I guess I must have to change that as well. Right? That must come into play, like, in just a little bit. Okay, okay, I understand now. That's why it said Q equals 50 on it. I was trying to figure out what exactly that meant. Alright. Well, there's the ship. Yeah, that we're... That's gonna crash into our planet here. Okay, gears are turning. Gears, they be turning. Oh, that also turns the ship as well. Okay. Well... Oh, the, the direction's turning. Okay. That's what that's useful for. Okay, well, bye! 
There we go. We we averted the collision. So we're good then. Dude, if that's literally the whole game. That can't be the whole game, can it? Really? That was it? Uh, <laughs> well, okay then. I mean, if that's if that's the entire game, then yeah, all right, that's fine. I'll be more than happy to end the video here because I mean, the last two videos I uploaded were like an hour and a half in length. So I mean, yeah, I guess I guess that's it. Is that literally the whole game? That can't possibly be the whole game, dude. Hang on a second, guys. I'll be back in a minute. Alright, well, I guess I am gonna leave the video here then, because I tried playing Samorost again, like doing two more full playthroughs of the game off screen, and I wasn't able to find any other secrets that may have been lying around anywhere. I, I don't know if this game has any, like, hidden secrets to find. There was that one level where you had to knock the lizards off the side of the mountain, and I tried to let them just climb up the mountain just to see what would happen, and they ended up crawling into that guy's hut, the guy that was cooking the fish, and they just disappeared. And then there was another group of lizards that came and also climbed into his hut, disappeared, and then another that did the exact same thing. So I think that animation just repeats in an endless loop loop until you knock all the lizards off and then the guy finishes cooking his fish. So I don't think the lizards were actually detrimental to your progress. All you had to do was to just pluck them off of the mountain in a certain period of time and then, you know, you can move on to the next part of the level pretty much. I also discovered that the reason why we have to distract the anteater with ants is because if you try going up the steps, leading to what I guess is the central control room of the biomechanical ship that you're trying to steer away from your home planet. Well, it turns out that if you don't distract the anteater with ants, then he'll try and eat you instead, and he'll spit you back out at the bottom of the steps. But other than that, he doesn't kill you, though. He just kind of halts your progress. So that was the reason why we had to make him eat some ants, so that way he would be distracted and we can go up the steps and he wouldn't try to eat us. But I wasn't able to find anything significant other than that, so I guess with that being said, we're done with Samorost. Yeah, uh, yeah, people were not lying when they said that this game was short. It is incredibly short, it's actually a lot shorter than I was expecting it to be. Like, going into this, I was expecting this game to be probably about as long or almost equally as long as Pilgrims. When I played Pilgrims on my channel a couple of years ago, that took me about an hour or so to complete the main story, because I didn't end up getting all of the achievements in that game, but the main story took about an hour to complete, give or take. I thought Samoros was going to be about as long as that, but this only ended up taking me about 20 minutes to complete. And if you already know where everything is and what exactly you have to do in each individual level, you can complete this game in about as little as 10 minutes, maybe even less. So yeah, it's extremely short. It's actually the shortest game that Amanita has put out, I believe. But yeah, that was still pretty fun and charming and delightfully weird, much like most of Amanita's games are. I was not expecting to hear drum and bass in a game like this, but uh, yeah, apparently we had to actually play it in order to uh, get that owl to to become so excited that he ends up like uh, freeing us off of that tree branch, otherwise we wouldn't have been able to move anywhere. I don't know how I feel about th the fact that some of the characters in this game have like disturbingly realistic looking human faces, especially that squirrel, and also that owl with the, uh, the human looking eyes. I don't know, it's a little creepy, not gonna lie. But then again, I shouldn't have really expected any less from Amanita Design. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know what else to say about this. Like, that's Samorost for you guys. It's a very short and sweet point-and-click experience. I'm assuming that the reason this was so popular, because I mean, Samorost was a fairly popular game when it first came out almost 18 years ago. 
I'm gonna assume the reason why it was so popular to begin with was because of the fact that it was so, like, surreal, or its art style was extremely surreal, and it, it didn't really look like anything else that had been done in Flash at the time. So I imagine that Samurost was probably ahead of its time in terms of, like, Flash game design. But from what I've heard, the later Samurai games have a lot more substance to them, they are a lot more substantial, and I do believe they are a lot longer as well, and I might still play Samurai 2 and 3 eventually, but I really wanted to start my journey into the Samurai games with the original. And because of the fact that the original was not available on Steam yet, I kinda just decided to avoid it for all this time. But I was pleasantly surprised to see that Amanita had released a remastered version of the game. I didn't even know that they were working on a remaster. But I'm pleased to finally see this game going live on Steam after 18 years. And I'm definitely gonna try and check out the other Samurai games in the near future. I am gonna try and play Samurai 2 next. Samurai 2 is not a free game though, but it's also rather cheap, because I think it only costs like $5 on Steam. Because I'm definitely craving more of this franchise after playing this, I can definitely see why this game would have also been re-released for free, due to the fact that it's so short in length. And I mean, the original game was released for free, because Samurai was originally a Flash game. So it really wouldn't have made that much sense if they tried charging people for the remaster, so I'm glad they kept it free. So with that being said, if you guys want to play this game, the link is in the description. It's available on Steam, itch.io, and there's also an iOS and Android version as well. And yeah, that was Samurost. Uh, wonderfully weird, much like most of Amanita's games. That's all I can really say about it. Wonderfully mysterious and delightfully strange, which is a pretty good way to describe pretty much all of Amanita's commercial games. And I don't know about you, but I am very much here for it. Amanita Design makes some of the best point-and-click games I've ever played, and I'm really excited to finally play Happy Game when that finally comes out, because I know that they are working on another project that I think they are going to be releasing later this year. Uh, Happy Game looks kind of insane. Definitely looks like a, a psychedelic trip and a half, and also very much horrifying as well, so I'm very much interested to play that when it finally comes out, and I also still need to play Creeks as well. I still haven't played Creeks yet, and I really need to get on that eventually. But I think for now I'm gonna stick with the Samurai games. The next Amanita game that I cover on the channel will likely be Samurai 2. I don't know when exactly that's gonna happen though, but for now... That's the end of this video. Links are in the description if you want to play the original Samurai. So, yeah, enjoy. Thanks as always for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video I make. Later!